Assalamu alaikum students, I am over here with my next lecture regarding chapter Daffodils from your English book of 9th class. In this lesson we will discuss all the grammatical techniques which I have explained in my previous lecture in the from and we will pick out all these grammatical techniques which I have discussed in my previous lecture from the whole poem passage by passage. I am coming towards the first passage without wasting my time so that you will be able to grasp out more and more knowledge in a short time. Before going to explain the passage number one, first I am going to tell you the theme of the poem again as William Wordsworth is known as the poet of the nature in the pages of history he has been discussed as such a poet which can completely change the theme and focus of a situation and its impact on the lives of human beings. This impact and this changing we will observe in this whole poem that how beautifully the poet William Wordsworth has the ability to mesmerize and to capture the mind of the reader. Here on the screen you can see the passage number one. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or high wales and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze. How beautiful these lines are. Before going to explain all these lines here in front of you, you can see some words which are highlighted. These words will tell you about all the similes that are going to be used in this poem. Okay students, now I am coming towards the main important words from this passage. In front of you here are the important words with complete grammatical description and with all the synonyms. The first word is wandered. It is a verb and its synonym is deviate. They had not wandered that far today. This is the sentence of this word. Wales. It is a noun and dale and farewell, farewell is its synonyms. The road goes north and west and meanders through pleasant vales and postures. Beneath is an adjective and below is its synonym. He was pale beneath the golden skin. King. Reference. I am coming towards reference of this passage. These lines have been taken from the poem Daffodils written by William Wordsworth, the poet of nature and great poet of England. He was very fond of nature. He explains nature in his poetry. This poem is also full with a natural scene. Okay students, while writing the reference of the poem, you can skip or add one or two line in it. It's not necessary that you are going to follow specifically these lines that I have given you on the screen. This uh, reference will remain same for all the passages. Now I am coming towards the explanation of this. In these lines, the poet was walking without any reason or work. He compares himself with lonely little mind just as cloud. He saw flowers which were so lovely. Okay. Now I am coming towards the second paragraph of the poem. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretch in never ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their hats in sprightly dance. Explanation of these lines is over here in front of you. In these lines, the poet is going to compare the daffodils with the stars. Because the poet is not able to collect the daffodils just like stars, he says that the number is above than 10,000. They are very happy in the nature. Now I am coming towards the third passage of the poem. The waves beside them danced, but they out did the sparkling waves in glee. A poet couldn't but, but be gay 
in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. The important words from this passage are over here on the screen. First word is sparkling. Grammatical description may it is an adjective and bright and shining are its synonyms. Her face was flushed, her eyes sparkling from the exertion. Glee is the second word. It is a noun and its meaning is cheerful. Try to get the opportunity to hear a glee. Gay, it is an adjective and homophile is its synonym. The gay remembrance of a life well spent. Jocund, adjective and jolly. Uh, it is an adjective and jolly is its synonym. A cheerful and happy birthday party is an example of something that would be described as jocund. Gazed, it is a verb. Admire is its synonym. She stopped and gazed up at his way. Uh, now I am coming towards the explanation of this passage. In these lines, the poet says that there are the other things which are producing the beauty but the happiness of the golden daffodils is more than other natural scenes. The poet wants to be here all the day. He thinks that their value is more than money. Yes. Now I'm coming towards passage number four. For oft when on my couch I lie in wakened or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Yes, in these lines, the poet is going to dance with daffodils in a very happy mood. Couch, it is a noun, the important word from this. And its synonym is sofa or a resting place. She curled up on the couch and fell asleep. Wakened, it is an adjective and its synonym is empty. The hallways were quiet and vacant and she followed Johnny into the dark night. Bliss, it is a noun. Happiness and joy are its synonyms. We wish them a lifetime of wedded bliss together. Solitude, it is a noun and its synonym is waste or emptiness. Solitude had always been her friend. Player, it is a noun and comfort is its synonyms. It was a player to meet you. Pensive, it is an adjective and thinking is its synonym. He was pensive for a moment. Okay, students, now I am coming towards the explanation of this passage. In these lines, the poet is feeling very happy with the beauty and with the colorful uh, dancing uh, uh, daffodils that he feels that he is also dancing with all type, all these daffodils and he is feeling that the scene of seeing the daffodils is so soothing and so uh, grasping that I can I am feeling that I am resting on a couch that he is feeling that he is free from all types of problems and he is feeling soothed over here on the bank of the lake okay students now we have to discuss the summary of this poem which is a most important question that can be asked in the paper here on the screen I have given you a detailed summary related this topic daffodils and you can take help from this summary from here and you can also uh, add or subtract the lines from the summary as I have given you a complete description of all the passages one by one and which will help you to understand and to remove or add some lines while you are going to give your own description. In the summary, you will have to give all the description related to daffodils and all the feelings which poet is going through and you can depict all the feelings of the poet in any other style which you want to go. Here on the screen, you can see the summary of this poem. You can take out, you can, in the, you can uh, uh, digest out this summary also and you can make it more anxious by adding or 
uh, deleting some things from this. In the next lecture, I will give you complete description of the exercise with all the grammatical contents discussed before in the part 1 of the lecture. Yes, uh, till then you have to wait for me. Allah Hafiz.